In this webcast, we're going to begin our discussion of structure-reactivity relationships. Oftentimes, the structure of a particular compound or molecule has reactivity associated with it. And what we'll see in this webcast, and also in the following webcasts for this lesson, are some of the things that we can use to predict whether a certain molecule is going to be reactive or stable. The general term that we're going to use to decide whether a certain compound is going to be reactive or stable is going to be the chemical potential associated with it. We can look at the chemical potential on both sides of an individual elementary step or an overall chemical reaction, depending on what we're going to be looking at. The three big things that contribute to chemical potential are going to be the bond energy changes, the strength or the reactivity of the electrophile or acid in solution, and then the strength or reactivity of the nucleophiles or bases also in solution. So in the later webcast, we'll take a look at each one of these. As a general guideline, the chemical potential for the reaction A to B is just like a ball falling off of a hill. As we saw in the previous lesson, GA is going to be higher in potential energy than is GB. Just like in physics, a ball higher on a hill has more potential energy than a ball lower on the hill. And as we move from A to B, energy is released through the course of this reaction. And the amount of energy that is released is this delta G, which is GB minus GA. There are four factors that contribute to high chemical potential, one of which is going to be a weak bond. So perhaps a peroxide bond, two oxygens bound to one another, or perhaps a halogen, two bromines, or two chlorines, two fluorines. The bonds previously mentioned are weak, and weak bonds tend to be easily broken because they have low-lying LUMOs in their sigma star. And that transitions very nicely into the next point of the low-energy LUMO, or a strong acid or reactive electrophile. A low-energy LUMO for a certain compound is going to be more reactive than a higher-energy LUMO. So if a particular compound has a low energy LUMO, it will indeed be a strong acid or a reactive electrophile. Third is going to be a high energy HOMO. The higher the energy of the HOMO, the more reactive that particular electron pair is going to be. And this very often correlates with a strong base or a reactive nucleophile. So the higher energy that HOMO is, the more reactive that particular compound is as a nucleophile. The fourth thing that we can look at is a permanent charge contained within that molecule. For example, a charge that is not delocalized by resonance tends to give a hint as to reactivity. For example, a carbocation without resonance stabilization is a permanent charge and gives a hint to that carbocation being a low energy LUMO and a good electrophile. So in the coming webcast, we'll take a look at the three things that contribute to chemical potential, the bond energy changes and the strength and reactivity of our electrophiles and nucleophiles.